How important can it be for Steele to be with a guy who's been down this road? It's awesome. Done well it's awesome. I mean, having David around as his as his synchro partner and his friend, yeah. um, mentor. You know, there's probably a lot of different words we can we can call him, but it's amazing. You know, it's great for our program. It's great for uh, Steele. It's also great for David because that's part of what David's purpose is now. Is he needs to be in to to teach what he's been taught and to give back what he's what he's experienced. And so they, it, it's a perfect it's a perfect combination that we should try to have really in all areas of life. You know what I mean? Older, wiser men discipling me on how to be a, a husband. You know what I mean? And a father. Same thing right here in the sport of diving is we've got a little bit older, a little bit wiser, a little bit further along in his career as well as his faith, as well as some other things that can pass that down to steel. So it's a beautiful marriage for both of them. And they both reap tremendous benefits from that. Steel and I diving together, I think that that's probably one of the, the coolest things about this journey is that it helps motivate me more. So uh, it was funny at the test event uh, down in Rio uh, in February, we qualified the spot for the United States to compete and he had like this excitement and he was getting that raw emotion and um, I was kind of like maybe jaded by it, like, like that's that's nice, that's, that's cool, we got the spot. So it was encouraging to see that and it kind of lit a fire in me like this is this is pretty cool. You, you get to dive and represent your country, you get to represent Purdue University on, on a big stage and I think when you do it so much you get numb to it uh, in a sense. To have that fire that he has under him I think I think it helps translate into the pool well too so it, it just helps us work harder. We're individually trying to do the dives the best we can because that's going to bring the synchro scores um, and we carry that into individual we're just constantly trying to do the dives the best we can. I don't know if one's trying to beat the other ever but we're always just working to make the dives the best they can be because if each of us do the dives the best they can be, it could go either way on any given day. Um, so I want to go into trials dive the best I can. It would be cool to beat David, um, but at the end of the day, if I do the dives the best I can, the results will happen and I'll be happy with wherever I fall. The dynamic between synchro, being teammates, and then transitioning as competitors individually, I'm a huge competitor, I want to win, and so like, if it's a go fish or the Olympic trials at diving, I, I want to beat Steel. And we do it every single day in practice. We, we contest against each other. If he, if he does a great dive, then I want to step up and, and beat him. And so there is that friendly competition, but at the end of the day, I, I want to win. And so uh, if that means uh, beating Steel, then that's, that's what I need to do. But uh, I like competing, and uh, he's no different. Who's the judge? Is it Adam? Uh, yeah, we have to have that non-biased, fair judge. So Adam coaches and uh, he also judges to tell us who's the winner. Is there ever a, a loser that's contesting the uh, the outcome from that? Uh, rarely. There's never... I feel like one of us either obliterates a dive and does it absolutely phenomenal and another one misses it. So sometimes it's not like there's this scale like who's going to be that judge, I guess. Yeah. I think the biggest thing that's different about 2016, different than the other times, is the fact that I'm coming in as a, a reigning gold medalist. And so there's kind of like when you hit that, that pinnacle of your sport in 2012, you, you kind of step back and you kind of like, why, why am I doing this? What else is next? And I think that was a huge struggle for me the year after the Olympics. Um, and so that's, that plays a huge factor. I think also my outside. Um, uh, factors too. So before it was just me going home training in 2012. Now it's I'm going home to a wife and a child and really trying to prioritize and balance what that looks like at home. You know, you've got more responsibilities. You know, he's a he's a husband and a father first. You know, and those two come before come before this. And uh, you know, it's like all of us, right? I mean, now he's one of us almost. We're a little bit older, we got a little more responsibilities, we've got significant others, and we've got families, and we've got, you know, all the challenges of life. So there's there's certainly a, a little bit more of a heaviness for him this time around, that he has responsibilities that he didn't have. But again, they're beautiful. I'm glad. I want it to be like that. I don't want it to be all comfortable and easy because we don't grow. When we, you know, when we get squeezed is when we grow. One, I have to beat Steel individually, so it's not it's not this easy road. Like I'm just gonna go in and clean house, or I have competition. So uh, one, I have to beat Steel, and there's a few other competitors that will give us a run for our money. But um, and two, Steel and I have to to win the Olympic trials synchronized. But I think at the end of the day, if, 
we know what we're capable of inside of the pool and so if we just do what we've done in practice every single day then there should be no reason that uh, we should be towards the top. It's hard to fathom that uh, I won the Olympics in 2012 sometimes and um, I don't know it's, it's exciting but it's also uh, it's, it's what I'm trained to do, so if that's what I'm trained to do, then uh, there should be some sort of expectation like that. Essentially, like these past four years, we've been training for this competition coming up the Olympics. Um, and over the past four years, I've kind of held everything with a tight hand, like diving is what I want to be doing. I want to be an Olympian. I want to do this, this, and this. And over the past few months, I've kind of had this realization that diving kind of became my god. And that was... That was destructive in many areas of my life, inside the pool, outside the pool with relationships. Um, and just having that switch recently, just kind of made me have this whole new perspective that, yeah, the Olympics are cool, yeah, I would love to go and compete for Team USA at the Olympics and win a medal and all that fun stuff. But if I don't, life goes on. There's so much more to life than just an event that happens every four years. Yeah, I would love to be an Olympian, I would love to be part of that elite group that get to call themselves Olympians, but at the end of the day, it's not about me, it's about God, and I'm here to love and serve others and serve God. And if I'm focused on just being an Olympian for my own selfish desire, then that's not going to lead a life that's fulfilling, it's going to tear down my relationships. Um, that's something that Adam and David have taught me over the past four years, is how to hold this all with an open hand. And while I still struggle with it a lot, I feel like I'm getting better at it, and I've got a better perspective going into everything. I think I'm in the Olympic Games. Being an elite athlete, there's there's a lot of pressure, high high intensity situations, and I think in 2008 I was trying to grind it and will it myself, and uh, just trying to do it for me. Um, and in 2012, that, that totally changed. Now it's it's a, a priority of trying to do it for God's glory and making this not about myself, but making it for. Uh, I guess his kingdom and I think it adds a lot of contentment in me so when you get in those high pressure situations like the Olympic Games or Olympic trials it's not a it's not a overwhelming and consuming like I have to do well it's a contentment of um, I know that I'm going to walk in here as prepared as that I can um, but at the end of the day this is just an avenue for me to, to make God's names bigger. How easy is it? For the Olympics, for all the Olympics mean, all the pressure, all the notoriety to overwhelm someone. How easily can that happen? Very easily. You know, I think it's probably the biggest challenge when you're going into an Olympic Games is exactly that. I mean, I think there's no surprise by why the majority of Olympians experience some sort of depression when they're done with the Olympic Games. You know, I think it's a I remember reading an article about it, I don't remember the percentage, but it's just a great number, that, and it doesn't surprise me at all because I think we, we hold on to this Olympic dream and we value it in an inappropriate way. That we believe it's going to give us things that, that it doesn't give us. And, and when you don't keep it into the right perspective, it can bury you. Is there any danger that could happen to you? It's a danger that could happen to me. Yeah. It's a danger that can happen to anybody. Yeah. But the, the number one thing is, is you got to identify that it's a danger. Yeah. You know, and I think all three of us, I mean, we've identified and we've said, hey, we need to come together. We need to know this is going to be extremely hard. Every day when I wake up, I'm, I'm bent towards wanting to get praise and adulation and you guys are so awesome and this and, and that's not what it is about but it's a battle every single day we need to fight that we need to fight the urge to make it about me and so the three of us have come together and we can battle that together and say listen we need to get each other's back we need to know when we start kind of getting led astray and we start thinking we're a little better than we are we need to really love each other we need to love each other as brothers, we need to love each other as brothers in Christ, and we need to really pull each other back to what is really valuable here, because as soon as it becomes all about me, I can't love anybody else. You, there isn't any change where that just happens. What you hope is that I can look back six months ago, and I've grown more now than I was six months ago, and I have the ability to love people better now than I did six months ago, and I have an awareness of where I can get kind of tempted and led astray to just make it all about me, you know, and, and we, we use the definition of love around here, it's a self-sacrifice for the good of another, expecting nothing in return or that the person being loved even deserves, right? Well, there's going to be times with Dave and Steele, man, I mean, they got lives, they come in, one of them's frustrated, one of them's this, and we can either get really annoyed with that and be like, dude, you gotta, you gotta man up and get going because you're affecting our team. Or you can say, hey man, I'm gonna give some grace to you right now. What's going on? I understand that. You know, why don't we go grab a cup of coffee? You know, why don't we chat about it? Why don't, and I gotta do the same thing. When we love each other like that, that's when magical things happen. And we're not really curious about magical things happening, really. 
but that's where things can happen when you begin to love like that. And so that's what we want to do. That's what protects us from getting pounded by the, the Olympic quest.